<laughs> What's happening, Boot Junkies? Mike Dog Audio here, back with another video about home studio voiceover setup and stuff. Uh, today, we're going to compare two different microphones. And this is really uh, making a decision about something like a forever mic. How, if you buy a mic, can you use it forever? And if you buy a quality mic without it being a bank breaking microphone, can you get a microphone that can potentially last you forever in your voiceover career? This idea came out of a, a request from uh, one of the comments that asked if I could compare these two microphones. So what we have here are the uh, CAD E100S that you see me use in videos all the time and a vintage CAD E100. These are two, essentially two different vintages, two different generations of the same microphone. I've got them going into my Zoom H5, which is right here. Maybe you can see it right here. It's on this little PVC makeshift stand that I, that I made. Uh, and so we're going to compare these two microphones, see how they sound, and see what the difference would be between a mic, a well-made microphone, one that's like 18 months old. This is maybe 18 months, two years old. And this microphone is a mid-90s version, so this one is old enough to drink in the United States. This is, a, this is about 20, 20 to 25 years old. This one is my guess. I don't know exactly the year this particular one was built, but this was made in the 90s. So it's old. And we're going to compare the two. Uh, the two microphones themselves, they're a little bit different. They have some slightly different buttons. They've got some slightly different configuration on them. But let's go over uh, sort of where these microphones fall in price-wise and some of the different features they have. And what I'll do is I'll switch back and forth between these two microphones so you'll be able to hear a difference. So, turn your headphones, kids, because that's going to be the best way to judge the difference between these. I'm running these completely raw. This is directly through uh, uh, really a nice budget preamp in the Zoom H5. Uh, no compression no noise gate, no nothing. So we'll just take these for what they are and we'll see if they're, see what the differences are between them. I didn't have it here, but I'll probably uh, bring my pop filter in because these, uh, these diaphragms will pop if I get too close to them. So when we get to things like the proximity effect, we'll see how they sound. I'm, I'm a little bit off them right now. I'm about this far off the mics right now. Uh, so we'll see, uh, we'll do some proximity tests and see what that does for us. So let's talk about the E100S. This is the mic that you can buy right now. And I think it's $399. Uh, last time I checked on Amazon, and I'll have a, a link down in the video, uh, down in the description so that you'll be able to see what the current price is. It tends to fluctuate by a few dollars. Um, this one has two different switches on the front. The first one is a pad, uh, a, a, a pad switch. And what the pad switch does is it attenuates, it turns down the microphone by 10 dB. For voiceover, that really doesn't mean too much. It would be very rare that you need to engage the pad. Uh, maybe if you're recording some anime and you were really screaming, you might need to pad it uh, to keep the microphone from clipping or anything like that. But generally, your preamp's going to be, be able to take care of that. There are times when, if you're recording at like concert levels or if you're recording drums or something like that, that you might need to engage the pad uh, just because no matter what you do with your preamp, you can never get it quiet enough. The second switch that's on here is a bass roll-off switch. And so I, for voiceover, I always keep the bass, the response nice and flat, but you can uh, roll off the bass. And I don't know exactly where the frequency cutoff is, but it's probably in the 60 to 80 hertz range where you can roll off that bass uh, so that you don't get um, any rumble. If you have a, a less than ideal setup, maybe you get rumble from equipment or a road, you can actually turn some of that bass off. If your voice is excessively bassy, you might be able to roll some of that off just to, to, to demud and clarify. Something that you could also do with an EQ, but this just has it built in. The CAD E100, the vintage CAD E100 on the other hand, is has three switches on it, slightly different. There's a, instead of a 10 dB pad, there is a 20 dB pad. So it just turns it down even more. This one turns it down by 10 decibels. This one turns it down by 20 decibels. And so that will uh, just turn it down even more. Um, it also has a bass roll-off switch that will, uh, again, attenuate the bass. But this one, the E100, the vintage one, has an on-off switch. Very interesting setup. 
The uh, both of these microphones run on phantom power, but the E100 could work. The vintage one could work if you had a preamp that did not serve phantom power. You could turn the microphone on and there's a pair of batteries inside, rechargeable 9 volt batteries, that will supply phantom power for a number of hours. I think it's like six or seven hours of phantom power. And then when you get it back to a phantom power supply um, preamp or uh, interface or device, it will recharge those batteries off the phantom power again, which is really neat. My all of my preamps supply phantom power, so I've never really used it. I just keep those batteries in there and recharged. I've replaced the batteries once because I, you know, they, they get old and I don't want to risk corrosion or or an explosion or you know whatever. I don't want the batteries to bulge or anything like that. Uh, so I I do um, I do have fresh batteries in there, but as far as I know, I've never never used them. They both use uh, the same shock mount. It's the they're compatible between the two. But as I look through the baskets, the uh, the diaphragms are of a slightly different size. I'm not sure how to this the E100's um, uh, basket is a uh, is a little denser, so you can't really see through it. But you can see the uh, you can see the the diaphragm in the E100s, and it's slightly larger. I think it's this is a one inch, and this looks to be about a three quarter inch. I'm not sure what the sound difference will be for that, but you you're listening you can hear what the difference is the preamp on this is set the same so they're uh it's set at the the same spot so you're getting these equal um we'll switch back and forth you'll be able to see if there's any noise um, these are both extremely low noise microphones you shouldn't hear a lot of hiss built into it I'm going to pull the uh, pop filter in here, and we'll do some proximity effect tests and see uh, see how the how the sound changes as we get closer. We'll start with the E100. So we'll get right up on the mic, and this would be a typical voiceover distance that I might use for this microphone to try and leverage the bass that's in my voice if we wanted it to be there. So you can hear how this sounds. We'll see uh, see if you like the way this sounds uh, or not. We'll compare that to the E100S proximity effect. So again, I'm about an inch to an inch and a half off the microphone. Uh, so really, it does pull out the, vo the bass in my voice. As you can hear, there are still plosives. This is not the best pop filter because I don't really use them that, that much. Uh, I normally use the, uh, the windscreen that's on my shotgun microphone. Uh, and this is ideal, not quite ideal setup. Uh, but you can hear the difference between the proximity effect of this microphone and of this microphone. So there you have it. There, there are two. There'll be a slight difference between them, and you can decide which one sounds better. This microphone, when you can find it, the E100, the vintage one. I looked on eBay this morning to see if there was any available. I couldn't find any on eBay. They do turn up on Craigslist in my area from time to time. They do turn up on eBay, and they have generally gone incredibly inexpensively. I think I, I have two of them, two of the vintage ones, because I, I love them. And so I have my A1, and I have a backup one. Um, and I love them. And I think I picked up both of them individually for about $125 each. And this one I bought new off mass drop, uh, during a drop for less than $399. I think it's $399 on Amazon now. But as you can see, if you get a well-made microphone, it really can last you for an entire career. This one being as old as it is, you can see it's as long as you care for it and you take care of the microphone, don't expose it to excessively humid environments. Don't toss it around. Treat it like a delicate piece of equipment. They're still rugged enough that you can make this microphone last forever. And I don't know that you could say that about a USB microphone. Um, there's, a, there's a reason why we stick with these XLR mics, and that's because it allows the other parts of your signal chain to get upgraded along the way. So if I wanted to switch between the H5 preamps and my Audient ID22's preamps, you can do that without having to change your microphone. Something like a USB, you wouldn't be able to do that. So take a listen, see what you think, and uh, you tell me what your forever mic would like to be. Anyway, I hope this helps. Now, go find your microphone and record something amazing.